basically a transition consultant. I um, come in and help you when you're thinking about moving and help you move from that point all the way through the move, the relocation and stuff. I organize all of that and will help you with all of that. I get paid as a real estate agent. That's the only fee that you would ever pay me if you sell a house. I get paid when you sell the house. The rest of the stuff is just what I do. And I have great vendors that are all vetted that um, work with me. That uh, And I do these programs once a month, typically on the first Friday of the month. You're supposed to be first Friday with Frida. <laughs> Except the senior fair is April 4th, or April 1st, I'm sorry, April Fool's Day. So we had to move that back to March 25th. And then the one in May, there was another conflict, so that one's going to be in April. So you know, if you watch the schedule, I know the new calendar's out, and there are three different ones in there that are coming up. Um, so I am a certified senior housing professional. I'm also a certified uh, senior real estate specialist, as well as uh, aging in place specialist. That's for the Home Builders Association. I work with a lot of uh, my clients are actually right now looking at how do they age in place. So we're doing remodeling and things, and I get them with builders. And eventually they will sell a house that I'm working with them so that they can stay in place as long as possible. Uh, I just had a um, really interesting uh, statistic that one of my lenders told me the other day is only 6% of seniors actually are in independent living or aggregate living. 6%. The rest of you are going to age in place. So we need to make sure that you are aging in place in a place that you can age in place, where there's limited amount of stairs and, and things like that. So we do that presentation as well. This morning we're going to talk about downsizing. So in your blue folders, on the left-hand side, you're going to have um, basically a little newsletter that we're going to do once a month. It says, this one says Senior Real Estate Journal. If you would like to get one of those every month, behind that there should be a blue sheet that's an evaluation form. If we get your address, we will mail those out to you every month. You don't have to worry about, like, well, I missed the class. They will be subject related. There's a whole year series. Do you email them? Or we can email them if you want them emailed. A lot of people don't want the emails, so I, that's why we're willing to do the mail. If you want to email, just put that on there and put newsletter. And then we're, we've got a, uh, we're going to do it as a PDF attachment. So we're going to work through that. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> the folders, uh, blue folders of information are on the, the table there. Make sure you sign in so that the staff doesn't yell at me this morning. It is really warm in here. It is so warm. Oh, this is about the warmest <laughs> the room has. It's not just you. We're not going to close the doors, so hopefully everybody will be quiet outside because if I close that door, we're going to have to open those windows because it is like. I'm boiling and I'm, that's unusual for me. So um, also in there, see so a bunch of different paperwork. The blue evaluation form is important um, in the sense that if there's a subject matter that you haven't had, a, you, something you're curious about, and you haven't had anybody bring a class here, um, put it on there because I develop classes all year long. Um, my selling your home as is next month is going to change because we had a lot of requests because the paperwork is so extensive. We're going to actually go over the contracts and what actually what the process is of selling your home in depth. I uh, haven't done that in about three years, so we're coming back around to it so that you can kind of understand the process. So I changed things. We had a group in um, North Raleigh ask for a tech class to figure out how to use an app. Like put an app on their phone. They want to do a little like study group. So we're working on that, like put an app on your phone and then use it and actually learn how to use it so that they know how to use it. Like not just sit in class, have it, and then go home and forget what it was all about and never follow back up on it. So we're working on some of that that we'll probably try and bring maybe late summer. Um, so that's important. If you like the class and it was good for you, if you can put note on there. And at the bottom, if you would like to receive a newsletter from us every month. We do a newsletter mailing that tells you where the classes are and where we're available. We do mail the hard copies. Um, they'll start out, they started this month, so everybody we're gathering addresses for going forward who said yes, I would like to get a newsletter, we'll be mailing those to you. We do not spam you with a bunch of emails. I don't have time and you don't have time and I don't have time to go through emails in my own email box. And there was another hundred this morning. I was like, please, I don't I miss things that way. Um, 
Also, out of this, one of the things that I'm working on doing, which will be great for you ladies too, is we're gonna start a downsizing club. It will meet monthly. I'm waiting for the space. It probably will be April. Um, there will be a fee, but you will meet monthly with a small group and every month we'll work on a project mm -hmm. until whenever you're done. Um, the fee is refundable at the end if you sell a house or we'll work with you now. Um, but maybe if you use a, a, a thing, we'll refund you there. Um, so that we'll do that. But that's in the making. If you're interested in that, write Downsizers Club on your blue sheet so that we're, we're compiling those and tagging them. And then we'll send those letters out when we're ready. So let's get started. How about you ladies introduce yourselves? Sure. Briefly, um, what you do, and then we'll get more in depth as we go. Okay. My name's Amanda Justiniani. Um, I am from here, even with that last name. No. So, <laughs> my maiden name was White, and I went to that. <laughs> I told him I would not marry him until I could spell it. I think I've mastered that 13 years later. Um, so my husband and I own an estate liquidation company. We also um, have produced an online course called Liquidation Lifeguards, which is the postcard flyer that you have there. Um, I'm a third generation auctioneer, so I have been around liquidation for a very, very long time. Um, liquidation Lifeguards is specifically gonna talk about all of your liquidation options, not just the auction method. So it'll let you know everything from buyouts to auction to senior move managers to all of your options. It's not selling one specific thing. And I will tell you, if you want to write down um, just a coupon code, is 50% off. You'll be able to get that whole program. It is broken up, easy to use. Um, so we do estate liquidation for local people here in the Triangle. We are currently ser only servicing Wake County at the moment because the need is a lot. <laughs> um, so we had to put some parameters on it. But that's what we do. Um, right now we are um, only offering the online auction method. Um, we did pivot over to that during COVID and it's worked out so well. And I think we're going to go back to in-person traditional tag sales where we're inviting people into the home. Um, so yeah, that's me. Hi. <laughs> My, my last name's a little, a little more simple than yours. So I'm Elizabeth Hirsch. Uh, my main name is Urban. <laughs> and, uh, and I am the founder and owner of The Downsizers. We are a senior move management team uh, that is actually serving the greater Triangle region. When I say greater, it keeps getting greater and greater. We just went out to Greensboro, I was like, oh, this is getting greater. Um, and we have an 18 person amazing team. I say I'm the most fortunate business owner on the face of the earth. Um, each individual really contributes very differently um, to the, the holistic picture and how we serve our clients. So we do everything related to a downsizing move, specializing in seniors uh, from A to Z. And we'll get into the details of what that means, but we have a slogan that kind of helps to break it down that we go over and it's plan, sort, pack, settle. We feel like those four phases really encompass everything from A to Z. Um, and we're able to kind of break it down. Um, most people kind of, when they come to us and ask us about, you know, their, their potential project or their potential move, it's filled with overwhelm and frustration and fear sometimes, and sometimes real excitement. Um, and we are able to kind of break it down into segments to just make it more palatable um, and um, being able to figure out what those dependencies are. So you'll learn lots, lots more about us. I was gonna say, that's a great spin off to our first question. Like you do, a, both of you do kind of an array of things, but what is the one aspect of your business um, that you consider the most valuable? I think for me personally, it is knowing that I have helped a client do something that is too emotionally or physically challenging for them. Um, I love that part of it. This part of what we do is very emotional. It's a very emotional process. When you, um, when we would do tag sales, 
and my client would walk through after it's set up, your whole life is on display. Um, you walk through and see that trip you took to Rome in whatever year it was, or when you went to the Grand Canyon or, or whatever. So it is an emotional process. So for me personally, it's just knowing that I've helped someone complete that process. It's, it's difficult. It's you know not something anyone faces very flippantly. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's a hard question. I'm gonna yeah. add part, part two to <laughs> two answers to that. Uh, number one is definitely compassion and approaching things with non-judgment. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine, we walk in, both mm -hmm. of us walk into lots of different situations and really approaching any home, any client with non-judgment. And we have no idea what that life, what that person has been through in, in, you know, in their lifetime, whether it's you know, the last year has been really hard or the last 80 years have been really hard. So I think that would be primary. And then, uh, then as it relates directly to our business in the day-to-day -day is critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Because uh, when we're dealing with the types of moves that we deal with and the, the quantity of things, essentially, there are a lot of things that can happen in that process. And you want a team of people that really know what they're doing, um, experts, and that have seen a lot of different scenarios and been able to work through a lot of problem solving skills. So that would be my, the, the top two. <laughs> yeah, couldn't, get, you couldn't do one, have to be two. That's <laughs> <all wrong. laughs> so, um, so let's do a real life scenario that you've come in and you've made a difference in a person's life through this process. And I've worked with both of you, so I guess you have lots Just of Just one? <laughs> <laughs> one that um, stands out most recent, I guess, would be the best. So I had a realtor call me um, and say, hey, I've got this property. It needs to turn over very quickly. Will you come in, look at it? You can buy the complete contents of this home for $5,000. And I was like, well, First of all, I, I don't really buy properties. <laughs> like I don't buy the contents typically. But let me come look and see if we can come up with a plan. Um, the executors of this estate were two young men in their 20s. Their mother had passed of cancer um, like the year before, and their father had recently passed. Um, they had the complete contents of their family home here in Cary, actually in Lockmere. Um, they needed to liquidate. Neither one of them lived locally. Um, so we came in and I was like, whoa, this house is packed. It's full of high-end stuff. I, you're not doing your client justice by allowing me to buy this for $5,000. Mm -hmm. So we came in, we did a three-day tag sale. We sorted, we threw things away that needed to be tossed, set it up. Um, so we ended up grossing $42,000, oh, where oh, I could have just bought it for five grand and moved it all. Um, that was not in that client's best interest. Um, those two young men were so happy with our services, they had not included any of their mother's jewelry, so they contacted us. <laughs> They're like, can you, can we, you meet us? And so we met them at a hotel here in Cary, probably four months after the sale. Mm -hmm. And they walked home in this lobby with these Ziploc bags with about $80,000 oh worth of jewelry. <laughs> like, whoa, wait a minute. Hey, we shouldn't be just sitting in the middle of this in Ziploc bags, okay. Um, so then we liquidated that part of their estate as well. So yes, there was a financial benefit to that for everyone involved, especially the client. Um, but knowing that those two boys that have been faced with the most difficult two, three years of their life because their mother passed of cancer um, and they weren't local, yeah, that's what makes me get up every day and dig through people's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll just comment on that is the fact that we have companies with that level of integrity in the triangle is is pretty unique because there are not there are a lot of businesses that wouldn't have done what you did. Um, and I've seen those other scenarios, unfortunately. So like really hats off to, to making that call because that's a um, that's what, what we, that's again, why we do what we do. Um, making sure that integrity is there. Um, I'm trying to figure out which one to pick. <laughs> um, so one of my favorite uh, client examples, it was during COVID. And we, of course, just like every other small business, what's gonna happen? <laughs> we don't know what's gonna happen. And uh, we figured out real quick that actually um, in our business, uh, you know, 
people continue to age, they continue to need to move, pandemic or not, right? So we just kept on trucking and we worked from day one, you know, just full on um, during COVID. Uh, so there was a client who we had been working slowly to downsize. We were actually working on her garage and that garage was about the size of this room and it was from floor to ceiling. And we were just, you know, working away. And she thought that she would have several years in her home. Unfortunately, um, her physical state had different, a different story for her. And so her dementia escalated quite significantly during COVID, which is not unusual um, during this time. And she ended up needing to move to uh, memory care up north near one of her sons, actually in New Hampshire. And so the house was vacant and full, 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 full. It was probably about a 4,000 square foot home and it had very, very uh, nice things in it. During COVID, she had five sons, all in different, one of them was global and I mean, in a, in a different country and the rest of them were domestic. And we had to figure out how to get that house on the market because otherwise it was going to sit for years potentially with all those things in it and she had gotten moved safely up north. So we devised a plan where we were able to virtually sort the home. Oh my. Oh wow. <laughs> and we had never done that before as a team. We didn't know how it was going to work. We had a kind of a powwow with the family and we said, "Okay, this is what we're going to this is what we're going to present. We're totally transparent. We've never done this before, but we're going to try our best and figure it out." So we developed a schedule where they could all meet with us at certain times. All, you know, all the family could be on there and we sorted every closet, every drawer, every room, every attic, you know, everything. We did it in two weeks. And what we found was that it was actually so much more effective because as you can imagine, you know, you're going to your home and you're, you're sorting and figuring out what you want to keep and what you don't, you get distracted. You know, you're looking at one thing and you need to go over here or someone or a family member comes in and brings your attention over here because that's more important at that moment in time. We work with, we deal with that every day. That's not a problem. But when you see something on a screen, guess what? You can just look at that screen and it's a very focused effort. I want you to look at this drawer individually. Well, unlike other families, and there are a lot of them that we work with where the adult children, as we call them, they don't want a thing. You know, it's all being liquidated, right? And so we're, you know, using all sorts of different companies to liquidate those items. In this situation, those five boys wanted a lot. We're talking five semis left that house wow. that we packed and shipped all over, you know, the, the globe, essentially. And that was surprising, that was unique, but that was really important to that particular family. So we sorted it virtually, and actually what it did was it saved that family so much money. They didn't need to fly here, so thousands of dollars in flights, thousands of dollars in hotels, thousands of dollars in food, you know, traveling, potential risk of health, um, and they were able to get their items received, put in storage, whatever they needed to do, at the end of a few weeks. And it was just, the beautiful solution for everyone and that is not applicable to everyone but it's just a, it's what what I'm talking about is being creative being problem solving being you know a critical thinker and that's something that happens in every single one of our projects so that's a great idea yeah. they're all unique now my question that comes to my mind is are you going to be using that technique yeah, going been. forward yeah. We with other clients now. Have you found it to be true for other clients? Absolutely. We've been doing it more. ever since, even when they're local, we suggest this. Now, not everyone will pick us up on it. You know, some people want to be there and I understand it, but we tell them these stories mm -hmm. of how much more efficient and cost effective it is because it's that focused effort. And it's also less physical, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not so many things going on at once. So it does, it's not applicable to every project for sure, but it's definitely, we've been doing it when family members need to be involved 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to fly here. We can do this virtually. Yeah, Caleb did it from out of town. Yeah, yeah. great. So, That's awesome. That's two, awesome. Weeks. two weeks, can you imagine? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so um, something, what would you like people to know about your service that the general public might be unaware of, like they hear move manager or they hear, you know, estate liquidator or auctioneer, but what is something that you do that's kind of an unknown or like an added benefit? Mm. Okay. 
going to answer it differently than the added benefit. Oh. You go, Elizabeth. Can I add a whole different answer to my oh, oh. cheaper. Yeah. Well, you can do the first one and then add, do, then add to it. It's something that, that the general public doesn't know or understand about, at least what we do, is a lot of times people wait to solve, they're in a huge hurry to solve the real estate arm of it, which is super, super important because a lot of times the stuff in your house is holding it hostage. Mm -hmm. um, but they wait entirely too long to figure out the stuff part of it because they think I'm gonna make two phone calls and someone's gonna come and they're gonna haul it off and it's <laughs> gonna go away. It does yeah. not happen that easily. <laughs> So I, if I could offer any advice for that, as far as what the general public doesn't understand is don't wait till the last minute. Because um, if you called me today, we are typically booked four to six weeks out throughout the year, all the time. Um, sometimes it gets to be eight to 10 weeks out. So don't wait until the last minute. So that would be the one thing that the general public doesn't. We'll come back to the added benefit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll think about that. Um, yeah, that, I think that is a two, yeah, definitely two-parter. Uh, the thing that is really interesting about the senior move management industry, and this isn't specific to the downsizers, this is all senior move managers that really gets me up in the morning, is we are dealing usually with a, more than the person moving. We're usually dealing with an adult daughter, a son, maybe a sibling, you know, multiple family members. And as you all know, everyone has opinions as to what should happen, right? And so let's say um, we are working with you and you are moving, you know, to, uh, you're downsizing into an apartment. Um, and you have strong opinions as to what should go. And then we come in, we come in and we weigh in on just because we've done 950 of these moves. And we've, we're really, you know, we, we have some good advice and some good expertise on it. And you say, well, I really want this bureau to go. And you say, well, it's probably not the most practical thing. And you say, this bureau is the most important piece of furniture to me because my grandmother hates it here or whatever, you know. And then the adult daughter weighs in. She says, no, that bureau cannot go. That, no, no way, mom, that bureau cannot go. And then the son weighs in and then the sibling weighs in. We, we get that a lot all day. The most important thing with us is we, we will weigh in all the opinions and we'll listen and we will give advice based upon our best practice or what we know may be true. The bottom line is no matter who is signing our contract or who is even paying the bill for this move, it does not matter. Our client and the voice that matters is the person in transition. So if you say, I want that bureau to go, I am come hell or high water, I'm gonna take that bureau, <laughs> right? If you, these are, this is your life, your belongings, and this is what's important to you. You can throw rationale out the window, right? So that to me is what kind of as an underlying component of what we do is maintaining that person, those person's wishes, regardless of the scenario. And uh, that is probably, the, that's what we kind of stand on, the pillar that we stand on. And that is something that we have to navigate very carefully in many situations, as you can imagine. So. Um, anyway, I'm sorry, just using this example. <laughs> she's probably got a bureau. She's right, right. right. Yeah. 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 Did, you know about yeah. Yeah. Did you have one for added benefit? Um, added benefit, that would be a huge part of it as well. Just having that middle person to help navigate through that because there are so many voices. Um, I would say, because um, Elizabeth does predominantly downsizing we do a ton of estates where someone's passed away and then you have all of the emotion from every person yeah. um so that's a huge the same thing a huge asset to have a, a neutral party there and then someone who's also sold stuff because when people everyone has preconceived notions mm -hmm. of what they have of value in their home so you need people who have liquidated before to say well that was valuable 25 years ago, but today this is where that value lies and be able to actually show you where that value is. So that's a really important part of what we do. Well, in my personal experience, my dad's 86 and he has downsized into an apartment at Stone Ridge, but he still has his Roadrunner collection. Mm -hmm. And it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> 
He sure it is. Yeah. It's worth yeah. a lot of money. I mean, he's got blankets and. I get lots of them. My mama said. Yeah. And but you have to tread lightly there because yeah. mama said. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he has some dementia, so this is what they saved it on, and I just refuse to even do anything with it. But the Beanie Baby. Oh. <laughs> The running around the country to get the Beanie Babies, and then we had them, and I ended up um, just <laughs> got them away from him, but he didn't know, and um, donated them to um, the Veterans Affairs, who do, does a lot of like parties and stuff that my brother DJs for. So I handed the bins to him and said, hand them out to the kids, and the kids were like, oh, they could each have one, and it was so special. And then my dad got to see that. He didn't know they were going to be there. But he, <laughs> he got to see them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he probably didn't realize they were in there. I, I love the v He asked me the other day for his VHS tapes. They have videotaped, bless their heart, back when you were videotaping movies off the TV. And they were in boxes in the garage. And he wanted to know where his, he had gotten a VHS tape from somebody in the community who was getting rid of it. And he was going to play his VHS tape. And I was like, oh, yeah, when I moved you, I saw those, they went right in the trash can. <laughs> like, these are not even going to, you know, they're, they're not movies, they're tapes of but, programs. Uh, with the they commercials. Like, yeah, yeah. Like commercials and everything were just like, you turned on the v VCR and you scheduled it to, yeah. You didn't have to go to Blockbuster. I, I, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, well, we've, we've gone, talked about this a little bit, the best time frame. And um, I will say my input on the best time frame is when you're starting to think about, you know, I probably need to be thinking about a move. The best time frame then is to get hold of some, one of us, mm -hmm. you know, and then bring everybody in. You know, when you're starting to think about, I work with people, I've got one couple in Lockmere I've been working with for five years. They're not ready yet. When they see the value of their house in the next couple of months, they'll probably be ready. <laughs> I'm thinking that's going to happen real soon when they, you know, they've been they've been working on it and we've talked about what to update as they lived in it. And um, if I, I if I had known they were going to be there for five years, I would have told them to go ahead and update the master bathroom because I thought they were getting ready to move. And I was like, you don't want to sit and not have a bathroom for five six mm -hmm. months while somebody does this. And we could change the lights, but then we have to change the fixtures. Well, once we do that, we have to redo the shower. It becomes a slippery slope in that. So. You know, but, but they've been slowly working on it. They'll ask me every once in a while for something. So the best time is to start at the beginning. So if it's not right at the beginning when they're thinking, of, when's the next best time mm -hmm. that they should call one of you, either of you, or both of you, whoever they think of first. They're gonna think yeah. of one of you before the other. Like I need to get rid of my stuff. Right. They're not ready to think about downsizing and where they're going to. But I need to like. So they just need to clean out this area of their home. Um, I think with us, when you need, when you feel the need to liquidate something, uh, we get a lot of people that liquidate storage units. Um, liquidate what? Storage units. Oh. Because, you know, a loved one passes away and you're like, I'm not ready to deal with that. So you pack it all away, out of sight, out of mind. And three years later and lots and lots of dollars later, you're like, I haven't touched this stuff. I need to get rid of it. So for us, you know, when you're ready to start Let go. letting go of some things, start that process as soon as you're mentally ready, because it is a mental process. Yeah. <laughs> the storage units. Yes. Yeah. We try to avoid storage units at all costs, <laughs> if possible. Yeah. You want to catch them before it goes in the storage units. Correct. Right. Yeah. Correct. Um, I would say, you know, one of the things that people they call us but they may not know why they're calling us is to just devise a plan right it's a timeline and so many of our clients have been working with us for three four years and they call because they know something is coming but they don't understand the timeline the dependency who needs to be involved how to break that down and that's what we do every day so often i'll go out on a complimentary consult and i'll sit down and i'm able to to understand what their situation is, whether it's moving in six weeks from now or whether it's moving in six years from now. And then we just develop a plan and then we just attack the plan accordingly. And so sometimes we're coming in 
twice a year to just move them forward, sometimes once a quarter, once a month, and sometimes we're there for two weeks to get it done, <laughs> you know, if it's a quick timeline. So it's really just about having a plan and then implementing it, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just breaking it down into segments that are, that make sense and understanding who needs to be involved in that plan. Yeah. And I mean, mm -hmm. companies like this, we just, we just bring it as, as, as needed. So, you know, that's, that's, I would say the, mm -hmm. the basis of kind of getting started. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is understanding that it is always beneficial to have someone help you. Um, I cannot tell you the number of clients that I've met with that said, ooh, I've been working in my mom's house for, for the last three months and I got rid of all of this mm -hmm. and I got rid of all of that just to leave you with this to worry about and inevitably whatever this is, those other things would have netted that family more money. <laughs> more money. Right. Um, so use a professional, use a professional because A, your time is important to have someone like Elizabeth's company to come in and save you time is huge to have a company like us come in and, and give you valuations and tell you, okay, these are things you can donate, you can toss, you can do whatever you want, but these things don't do that yet. I know that you only paid a quarter for them in 1950, whatever, but these are valuable now. They might not have been 10 years ago. So call a professional, phone a friend. <laughs> oh, I like that. We should start calling it that. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Well, it's funny. That's the next question is the, I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, what would you consider the benefits of util utilizing yourself, your, something like you as opposed to them doing it themselves? Well, that's my answer. answer. You save tons of time. And money. And money and emotional energy <laughs> because if someone's there to be able to say no these are the things that you should be focusing on it just makes it easier because the project is so big and so overwhelming and if you have someone that's been through it as many times as we have you can break that down um, I always use as an example when my mother passed away because my family has done this forever um, my father could not live in their home anymore he stayed two nights after my mom passed away and then we found a different solution because he was just too sad their house sat for three and a half years mm -hmm. with no one in it my mother's stuff was still on the vanity in the bathroom because we emotionally could not tackle that job and i couldn't bring myself to pay someone to do something i had done for all these years right, right. Yeah. um so phone a friend to help because it's hard yeah. mm -hmm. uh i would say we we work as a team with our clients. So what we are doing is breaking down, uh, we walk, I walk into a home and I'm able to see, let's say eight different areas that really need to be sorted and downsized. And then we know there's a lot of other areas too, right? Just kind of smaller projects. So I'm gonna recommend, this is where I would recommend using us because it's labor intensive, it's a lot of critical thinking, valuation, uh, there's some more valuable things in this area, and there are some really great things that you all can do on your own. A linen closet, junk drawers, the kitchen, under, you know, going through and, oh, I'm, I'm not using this anymore, you know, that type of thing. So we, we kind of divide and conquer, and that enables the clients to save money um, on our services, so where we're just coming in for kind of some of the bigger hitting sorting projects or areas that are really emotionally challenging, we can help navigate through. Or just, I don't know what to do with my office. I don't have a file management system. I don't know how to do this. I need to take this and put it into this. So, you know, so we help navigate that. But areas that are easier for the client, we, we break down and, and try to get, you know, try to uh, coach that client through that process. Um, so we don't have to be part of all of it. Well, it's funny, I'm going to backtrack to before, like the things that, that they, I can do it myself. I have a um, family, they're remodeling a downstairs bathroom because she can't go up the stairs. And um, they also are asking for three rooms to be kind of downsized and organized. Mm -hmm. And so I know that when Elizabeth starts with them now, that she will be moving them later because the relationship will be there. So then I don't, I just have to do a check-in after that which i do and say how are things progressing where are we at because i have two different sets of medical issues if he has a heart attack before she passes away they have to move 
she can stay in the house for now because she's just on oxygen and stuff. But there, there's all these dynamics. So being able to get started, now we can start working on the whole house. So it's not overwhelming when the trigger happens. Mm -hmm. And everything is, what is the trigger point? Mm -hmm. You know, when we, the remodel I did, when there's a wheelchair, there's a trigger point. They're like, we can get around the house in a walker. They just did $200,000 remodel. Put a whole downstairs master suite on this house in this market they made way, way more money than it cost them but what's the trigger point so we're starting to work through some of that stuff early when you're thinking about it then when we hit the trigger point you're ready and you're mentally ready you're physically you know your stuff is set to where you need it to be so um, a little about your staff any special certifications organizations um, training and stuff that they may go through um, to be able to do your process mm -hmm. So my staff is myself and my husband for the most part. <laughs> um, so ours, um, I'll, I'll tell you just in general, from an estate liquidator to an auction company. In the state of North Carolina, to be an auctioneer, a licensed auctioneer, or hold an auction firm license, you have to actually go to auctioneer school. We have to take a state board exam. Um, we have to complete certain hours of continuing education every year. So we are governed by the auctioneer, North Carolina Auctioneer Licensing Association. So if something, if a client were to have a complaint or they did not feel something was handled properly, they have someone to go to other than me to say, okay, can you look into this? Because this was an issue for me. And then the auction board comes to me and we talk about what happened. You know what that hasn't happened to me thank goodness but that's the process if it did um as an estate liquidator or a tag sale company there is no governing body so there is no one there to look out to say hey these are the rules and the way it should be done i absolutely wholeheartedly am for that happening um, but the state of north carolina hasn't seen the relevance to do that yet um, so for us there is that there are also i am not a certified appraiser um, but just know that when you are dealing with certified appraisers, regardless of where that is, there are different levels. You want to find appraisers typically work in a certain field. So there'll be an art certified appraiser. There'll be an antique furniture certified appraiser. There's a fair market value certified appraiser. So they're all different. Um, when we refer things out, a lot of times our, there's a high-end auction gallery here in North Carolina that we send a lot of things to, and they have different certified appraisers that I oftentimes phone a friend and say, hey, Claire, look at this piece of art. What, a, what do I need to know about it? And B, are you guys interested in consigning that? Mm -hmm. um, so just make sure that the people that you use have a network and a resource and the experience and the knowledge to move forward with that. Um, there's a lot of people in our industry that went through the process one time with their parents and thought, ooh, I could do this as a job. That's very different. Um, so just make sure that <laughs> they have done it many, many, many times and have the, the certifications that they need for that particular job. Uh, on our side of things, we are accredited through the National Association of Senior Move Managers. Um, it's a global, uh, global association. Um, we are insured, we are bonded, and all of our employees, which they are employees and not subcontractors, uh, go through a very vetted background check. Um, many of our clients, um, as, as Amanda's clients are saying, can have some very, very nice things. <laughs> and we also go through everything in a home. And so we, we develop a very personal relationship with our clients. It's, it's what we call very intimate when, when it's all said and done. So there's a very close connection there and there's a lot of trust that goes back and forth. Um, so when we're hiring, we're looking for people with a variety of backgrounds and skill sets. We have people that headed up clinical trials. We have people that uh, own their own uh, antique auction houses. Uh, we have people that worked in senior communities as activities directors. So a real uh, combination of a lot of skill sets. Um, but in general, we also are dementia certified through Orange County as well. And we are vetted um, on, through all the continuing care retirement communities within the triangle. So you have to have a certain, a certain a le a level of insurance and um, qualifications in order to do that. We too are insured and bonded. Insured and bonded. Um, we had skipped a question I'm gonna go back to. What's 
as, as they might be looking for a loop manager or somebody to help them go through this process, what are the questions that you can think of that they should ask? Because most of us are gonna talk to two or three different people and get several different estimates. And I can warn you that some of those are just a shot in the dark and then it can go up from there because I've had that happen to clients. That's why I use these particular ladies. Um, but what are some of the questions that they should ask when interviewing somebody in your field? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is before you even interview them, do your research on them. Uh, read their Google reviews. See what kind of presence they have online. Online is a huge, huge thing with what we do. Um, at least in the liquidation side of it, to have a, an online presence is very, very important now. Um, as far as questions on the individual interview, how long have you done this? What certifications do you have? Um, what part am I going to play in this process? Um, as far as liquidation goes, are you gonna leave me with an empty house or are there gonna be parts that I have to take care of that I'm responsible for? Um, how much does it cost is always the huge <laughs> question. Make sure that is very clearly defined. Um, there are some companies, at least in the triangle, as far as estate liquidation, um, you can expect to pay a flat commission rate, or there are some companies that work on what they call a guaranteed minimum. So if it's a guaranteed minimum, let's say the guaranteed minimum is $5,000, that means they're gonna get the first $5,000. If your sale brings 5,500, you're gonna get 500 and they're gonna get 5,000. So be very clear on how that works. There's other companies that come in with a low commission rate, but then they add on, okay, I'm gonna charge you an advertising fee, I'm gonna charge you credit card fees, I'm gonna charge you a trash removal fee. There's not anything wrong with those fees, but you need to know that they're there. Um, so just make sure you have a very clear understanding of what you will pay out of pocket to make that happen. I would say the you, most you have a lot of competitors yeah. in this on various levels. So this is yeah. a good question. It's interesting because we don't we don't really run into competitors very often. Um, and I always am perplexed by that <laughs> in the triangle. Um, it, and so I'm not really looking at it as a from a competitive perspective. It's more about kind of protecting the client. And in, from that perspective, it's really about knowing, is that company, and, and this could go for you know a lot of different companies, are they working in the box or outside of the box? So the, re, the, way, the reason I say that is because there are definitely companies, and let's, call, let's say movers, for example. When you call a mover, you want them to move your items from point A to point B. They're not going to be doing a lot of different things on behalf of that project. That's a very specific function. In the move management industry, we do so many different things. You know, we are having conference calls with family members. We are buying furniture on behalf of the client. We are navigating some really sticky situations with you know health and caregivers and that type of thing. We we are downsizing. We are understanding valuation of items and bringing in the right types of parties. We are packing professionally some very um, sometimes some very valuable items. There's so many different tasks. You want someone in this particular service industry that can actually go outside of the box because if they are in the box then that is going to be a fairly limiting experience and that's what we actually encounter more often is we need to go outside of the box and when you have a team of people that have a lot of experience guess what they can go outside of the box really well but staying in the box actually can really prohibit your experience and then you have to figure out all those resources the whole the whole benefit of bringing a senior move manager in is they are a single point of contact for everything from beginning to end and when then you have to go figure it out because they don't do that then it's it's limiting right so that's that's probably how I would approach that um, that's, that's a hard <laughs> that's a hard concept but it's it's something that we that we face a lot in our business so we have what is your business philosophy or mission and I think we've kind of covered that pretty extensively so I, I like this question it's like what is the hardest part of your job I keep coming back but 
the emotional part of it, watching my clients walk through that process of transition, like that's the hardest part. Um, watching sometimes inner family conflicts or that adult child that doesn't understand this transition and doesn't approach it with the compassion that they should because they just it's interfering with their life and they want to get it over with. Mm -hmm. So that's really difficult um, to watch as well. Um, the rest of it's just physical stuff and it just happens and it gets done. Um, but for me, it's the emotional part is watching, you know, a spouse lose another spouse, all of those things. But it's, it's very much like a funeral director <laughs> because it is a grief process. Mm -hmm. All of it is. So, um, the grief of giving up your, yeah, your stuff, your life yeah. on display. So, um, I echo that comment. Um, I, I say this, we, we often, when I when I first meet someone, clients will say, well, I don't understand why this is so challenging this time around. I've moved 20 times in my yeah. life, right? I've, li I've moved to China, I've moved back, I've done this. And, and I say, this is unlike any other move that you've ever experienced. How, you know, typically we've all moved, right? And we're usually moving laterally or we're yeah. upsizing, yep. right? What time in your life has someone come in and said, we need to downsize and ask you to give up 50 to 95% of your belongings? That's essentially what we're doing, right? When we're looking at this, that is hard. It's hard emotionally, it's hard physically, it's hard cognitively. And so this is totally different than any other move. And certainly people within the family can't relate to it because guess what? They haven't experienced it, right? And sometimes friends haven't experienced it. So we're, we just try to be very transparent and we, we just try to be very supportive of the process, knowing that this is so different than anything else that, that you know, we've, we've come through in our lives. So. I have a funny story about this. Okay. We're talking about sad, but this is kind of a cute story. I was <laughs> doing um, an estate liquidation um, for a gentleman. His wife passed away and he was moving to um, an independent living facility because their house was just so big. They had lived in that house for, I think it was like 45 years. So part of our job is, you know, we pull everything out and then display it and whatever because it was a tag sale. Um, so stuff grows, like you've tucked it away, <laughs> you know, you forgot it was even there. It's like gremlins, they multiply. So, yes, <laughs> very much so. So I had worked there all week long. Mr. Pittman comes in towards the end of the week. It's like Friday. Everything's set up. We're just tagging. That night before, my husband had come with our kid. We had five kids. Um, they've all grown and flown the nest now, but at that point, they were at home. So he brings them and pizza over. They're doing homework. We're pricing. The next day rolls around. Mr. Pittman comes. He's looking through, and he's like, wow, I did not know I had all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, it tends to grow. And he goes in the refrigerator and opens up the refrigerator and there's my pizza and soda from the night before. He goes, there's even food in here I didn't know I had. <laughs> I'm like, that's mine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that was kind of cute. It is cute. Yeah. It does. It does. Yeah. It grows and multiplies every time. Yeah. I was going to say it multiplies like bunnies. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of like those grocery bags. They, every time you turn around, you thought you got rid of them, and there's just more and more, and then when you need one, there's never one around. Yes. Right. <laughs> so um, we're going to open it up. Let's see. It's almost 6 o'clock. Um, it's really dinner time now. I'm sure the dog is at home going, why did you turn that? So um, this, I, you guys are so mesmerized. Usually we get one or two questions in the middle, so everybody's been so attentive. That's awesome. We're gonna do open it up for questions and answers. Um, like I said, if you're gonna ask a question, if you just pull your mask down so we can hear you a little bit better, um, that would help. And just anything that you uh, want to ask about, yeah. Amanda, do you have a dollar limit on liquidation? Good question. Yeah, that's a great question. We do um, because it is just my husband and I. Um, for us, it's such a personal job. I don't have a group of teams because I feel like if you meet with me and you hire me, I, I want you to get me. Um, so for us, we do have a dollar limit. We like for it to be a minimum of $10,000. Um, now I will tell you, with COVID, we switched over to online. So now we can either go into someone's home and photograph it in place, you know, you guys 
worry about what you're gonna move, get that out. We come in and sell the balance of what's left. Or if you have a handful of items that we approve, they can be brought to our office slash warehouse facility. And then it's included in what we call a multi-consigner auction. So our multi-consigner auctions could be two or it could be six or eight different people. Um, so that's kind of a trick question. If we're doing it in the home, I have to know that, you know, it's going to bring a minimum of that. Okay. I am a Cary resident, mm -hmm. but I live in Chatham. Mm -hmm. So if you called me, I would say no, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> you said wait. Yeah. So it, it's tricky. I live on the far side of the county as well. If I lived in the middle of the county, it would yeah, be great. Be <laughs> but to get to Chatham County one way from my it's home an is an hour at least, yeah. okay. depending on the time of day. But you could certainly, um, there is a resource called estatesales.net. So if you go to estatesales.net, put in hire a company in your zip code, it's going to give you a list of companies that service that specific zip code. And, and I would tell you, call Elizabeth because she probably I'm knows. I'm in County. She's in Chatham County. She's <laughs> County. She I'm comes this help. way, but she yeah. probably yeah. can I'll give you some you in the right direction yep. of people that she's dealt with. It because I've dealt with a couple of different um, estate sales. Some are good, some are not mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, you can say that about any industry. About any industry, it, it some of it came down. The ones that I've experienced in the last year been how their bookkeeping is like. I had one estate sale and it didn't end up making a lot of money, but I got the house cleaned out, which the house really needed to be cleaned out. It was a, it was a mess. The, we went in the garage, two stall garage, and there was a pile over nine foot tall of just stuff stacked on top of stuff on top. At, at the end, she said, well, my wedding dress was in there. <laughs> I was like, well, did you, how do you know? It was in there. Right. You know, like, how did we know that we were supposed to save that? Because you had just stacked it in with, I mean, the, the pile was probably 15 foot wide and deep, and it was like, it, we, it was over my head. They just were stacking stuff on top of things. But the gentleman, I said, well, I need uh, an accounting. He just sent me his book. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. okay, that's not a good accounting. And that's gonna be so. a, a great question to ask from yeah. the yeah. giddy up is, am I going to get a list of everything that's sold and how is that going to be presented to yeah. me? I do not suggest hiring any company that's not willing to give you that inventory. Yeah. In the state of North Carolina, as an auctioneer, you have to give an itemized list of every single item that's sold. Mm -hmm. um, but there are companies that yeah. don't offer it that. Was an, it's just in a sale, so yeah. it was like a tag sale, and, and so I've learned that was yeah. my first experience with that. And I will say that some of the companies that Frida's asked me about, if you from the start had Googled that company, yeah. their Google reviews would have you that everything you needed to know. Sometimes I come Sometimes. in afterwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Frida comes in and they've already determined this is who's going to do, yeah. you know, X, Y, and Z. But if that client had Googled the company you mentioned earlier, yeah. they would see right. repeated Google reviews. And that, that's true for consigners and, mm -hmm. you know, other specialists that are liquidating. Um, so it, it goes for all, all companies. Yep. All everything. My husband reads reviews for he doesn't buy anything yeah. ever, even on Amazon, without reading the 12 months. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. What things do liquidators not handle? Things do liquidators not handle? Oh. Ashes. <laughs> okay, that's creepy. We, we handle we ashes have all the time. <laughs> I don't handle ashes typically. Um, I found um, a box with a eulogy in it in a closet, and I called the gentleman and said, "You're, I'm assuming, great grandfather's in the closet. I need you to come and treat them. I don't know what to do with them." Um, other than that, um, this liquidator, if it's in the home. If it's 50% or more of the contents and we do it in the home, we'll handle anything that's yeah. there. Um, if it gets moved to our facility because it's not in your best interest to move absolutely everything in the house, um, we would get more granular over what we would not take. Um, so that's kind of a, a trick question. But if it's a liquidator that does it in your home, typically we handle everything. I should have been a little more specific. Do you handle uh, vehicles? Uh, 
set up tools and then mm -hmm. interaction and all that yep. kind of stuff. So and if you have a lot of tools, a great question to ask any liquidator is how are my tools going to be sold? Um, for us, we price everything individually, even down to a screwdriver. Um, some liquidators do what we call box lots and they throw a bunch of tools in a box lot. Um, my husband loves going to those sales where there's snap-on tools in a box lot that he can get for five dollars. That's not in your best interest. So you're going to want one of the questions to ask is how are you going to price or market my items? Will they be sold in large groupings or will they be sold in individual lots? Sorted. Yeah. So like I have an auction up right now, um, a vintage clothing auction, and we went through and pulled the individual pieces that we felt like would stand alone and we could sell individually. And then we are also auctioning complete closets. So you are getting all of the folded material in this closet, but we have gone through all of that already and pulled out what we felt like. Yeah, tell us some of the things that are in that, because I've seen that auction. That auction. It's a unique auction. Yeah, well, we have two running from the same house because there were so many it's vintage yeah, clothing and, yeah, and accessories. We are doing a separate vintage clothing auction because it's just a different buyer than the buyer who's buying individual household goods. Um, so that's what we did. So we've got some original Lily Pulitzer from way back in you know the 70s, I think. Um, we've got bangle bracelets and Bermuda handbags and shoes and scarves and all kinds of things. Which is, was it one of yours that has all the lace panties? Was um, that one of your company but a different? That was a different situation. That okay. was me personally, my eBay sales. <laughs> so I, my husband and I also, my husband sold on eBay for I think 22 years now. Um, so we like to go to thrift stores and anytime we go on a trip, we thrift all the way there and thrift all the way back. And <laughs> most of the time our thrifting pays for our trip. Um, and I had thrifted a large bin of ladies lingerie that was, um, it was vintage. vintage. So I've been selling ladies vintage panties for about $50 a piece on the wow. day. Oh, it's wow. amazing what their prices yeah. are. Yeah. And they're in they're in impeccable shape. Oh yeah, they're I mean, in great shape. I'm not sure any of them were ever really worn, yeah. but it was a fun it was fun to go through. Yeah. So yeah. other questions. Yeah. So say you can sell anything, you just have to have somebody who knows what you have. You know, that old trunk that's been sitting in the attic for you know generations. I say it's it's often the things that people think are the most valuable are the least valuable mm -hmm. and the things that people think are trash potentially are the most valuable. Yes. And it's knowing the difference yep. between the two. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a, a can I give an example? Well, sure. Sorry. <laughs> um, we had a North Raleigh client last year who was liquidating in her parents' home. We're going through it. She was very concerned about her father's roll top desk. Well I had told her please keep the desk. It was obvious this woman had emotional attachment to this desk. And she goes, I can't, I don't have room for it. And I said, well, therein lies the biggest problem of this massive roll top desk. It takes up a huge footprint and you're, you're weeding out a lot of buyers because most people don't want these huge pieces of furniture now. Um, so I can sell it, but I can promise you it will not bring the emotional attachment that you have to it. So going through her stuff, we also found, and I'll contribute, I will give my husband credit for this. We are um, 10 years different in age. So there are some things he remembers that I don't know. <laughs> um, and I found what I thought was a melted candle in a dome little display thing. And I'm like, this is super weird. Why would someone save this and display it? And I was like, John, I'm not sure what this is, but it should probably be tossed, it's gross. And he was like, wait, no, that is, there was a kit you could buy in the 70s from Vincent Price that would do a shrunken head. So you would carve this apple and then put this oh, chemical yeah. on it that would shrink it and petrify it. So the kid had done that and then they put it in this blanket. So we run this auction. This roll top desk that this woman adored brought $65. This shrunken apple I saw that, that I was going to throw away brought $125. <laughs> so that's where you have to know. And sometimes we don't even know. 
So if it had brought $5, I'd have been like, all right, sweet, because <laughs> I thought it should be thrown away. Um, so you just, you never know those things. There's, there's so many hidden things. I always tell people, don't throw anything away. Don't, don't get rid of anything. Let somebody come in Let a professional and look at start it. looking at it because you will be shocked. You're gonna take the stuff to the goodwill that mm -hmm. is gonna make you money. Mm -hmm. That's making them money. Yeah. That's gonna, yeah, that's making them money, not you money, but make yeah. them money and you're gonna, these are gonna be the ladies who are gonna know. The, the flip side to that that we see when we're sorting with clients is a lot of people will make assumptions of, oh, this piece of furniture can go to, you know, mm -hmm. go to Habitat or that type of thing. Depending on where that furniture was, like let's say it was with uh, a mom that had dementia or a dad or it came from someone, we often, I'm talking about at least 30% of the time with our dementia clients, money and valuables are hidden within oh, furniture. Oh, oh, so we have yeah. found on many occasions up to $22,000 worth of cash yeah. underneath things, back of drawers. I mean, you wouldn't believe what we find. And it's because of that, you know, an element of paranoia, uh, confusion, that type of thing. And this happens not only in our seniors' homes when they have dementia themselves, but uh, certainly when furniture has been passed down and no one ever knew it was there. And so it might have been in multiple households, you know, for generations, and then we find these things. So really checking things, um, if that's an element of the story, of the family story, checking things before they go to donation, certainly to trash because we find green, we find jewels, we found all, all sorts of things, or maybe it's just something really sentimental that's very special to the family. So, you know, just, just really thinking about it in a different way, mm -hmm. um, in addition to the resale of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And if you find cash in one place, don't you know. stop looking. Yeah, absolutely. Because if they hit it in one spot, there's gonna be more. Typically, the largest volume of cash is in a bedroom because that's a room no one should be in unless they're invited. Mm -hmm. um, I found $22,000 in the back of a closet balled up in aluminum foil. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't have done this as long as I have, the regular person would have just picked it up and thrown it away. Mm -hmm. And it was just, in, I'm like, why are there balls of aluminum foil in the back of this closet? And I opened the first one, I was like, ooh, okay. And then it just kept growing. Yeah, for, so, for items that are of historical value that probably could be sold, but shouldn't mm -hmm. be sold, uh, we found a uh, trash bag, or found trash bag, or found a trash bag, which is not unusual, in the back of a closet. Most people would assume we go through everything, every pocket, everything, to make sure it's all clear before you know, it goes wherever it's supposed to be going. And in that trash bag um, was a original Civil War jacket in wow. pristine condition. And it's now in the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. So, you know, wow. so there's, there we send things to all different museums. So again, it may, it's not for resale, but it just, it's special. It needs to be seen by other people. Mm -hmm. And so, and that would have just been thrown out otherwise. Uh, Cause we were instructed to throw out everything. That nothing, we don't want anything else by the family, but we were able to uncover these things. So. There's just so many layers of this. And isn't it amazing when you find some things? Oh, they tell you to throw so everything special. out, and then you find these certain things, and I'm like, what, did you know that we found a Bible that the first person in 1836 wrote a note in, and then it's just been passed down, and all these families wrote these yeah. notes, and they're like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw that away. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you deal with the emotional attachments of people? They're downsizing. Mm -hmm. But they're real emotional. Some people don't have any. They don't. They're not. They're like, I don't care what mom and it's, it's just let go. But for the person that is emotional, maybe it's their own. How do you? What rules can be set in place to kind of hone it in a little bit? Because yeah. if you're going from this to this, there's got to be some sort of planning. Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah. So for someone who's not spending ten thousand to bring somebody in, because maybe they don't have it or whatever. Right. So, so the most. So there's lots of ways to approach it. <laughs> um, it's kind of like you start here and then you go, it's, you know, right. like jagged, jagged path. But uh, the most logical is how much space do you have that you're going into? So we may say, you know, we've come across collections of 40,000 books. You know, we deal with lots of professors in this area, lots of, you know, lots of academics. 
And so they think they're gonna take their book collections into a one bedroom apartment. And so a lot of times that spatial reasoning is just gone. Most people, just the general population, most people don't have spatial reasoning. I didn't know that until I got into this business, yeah. to be honest. Um, but they, it's very, it's, it's just not a skill that most people have. Um, and so we will physically actually create what they are, if they can't go to the new space, we will physically create it. This is the bookshelf, this is the only bookshelf, and this is how many books, and we just do the math, essentially. And that's a very logical approach, but that doesn't work on everyone. Right. Um, and so if it's more emotional, it's we often have to identify a trauma that potentially is associated with that item or category of item. That happens a lot when we, we see people kind of putting on the brakes of something, and we have to get there. And the reason, the way we have to get there is by establishing trust, of course, first and foremost, but really determining, okay, is there trauma associated with that? And is that the reason? And usually once we identify, because the person themselves don't understand what it is. They just know it's really hard to let go of. They, they can't recognize that there's trauma associated with it. Once we identify what the trauma is, and we talk about the trauma, then all of a sudden it's much easier to mm -hmm. let go of or figure out what to do with it. Um, sometimes it is, it's another scenario, uh, just yesterday, I went on a consult and there were four huge, huge um, portraits, probably 24 by 40. Wow. And they, she had all the space in the world in her home, but she was moving to an efficiency with all windows. So very little wall space. And it's a time lapse. It's the same room, her entire family before her husband passed. And it's every year, like every three years. So it was the kids growing up. So it was really special. And she just broke down in tears because she knew there's no way these portraits were gonna go with her. So I said to her, okay, well we, and she goes, I can't throw them away. What am I gonna do? They're gonna have to go to the storage unit, which they may end up needing to go somewhere to someone, but they can't go with her. So what we're gonna do is we're taking those portraits, putting them in a light box, which we have at a studio for digitization, and then we're creating little, a little, a little thing for her kitchen, right? And so it's just she'll have that memory with her, and then we're gonna do we're gonna do one for each of her kids that she can do for the holidays. So sometimes it's just about presenting a different solution, a creative <laughs> solution, instead of taking up this much space, now we're taking up this much space, but you can still see it every day. And we do that a lot with like china, where we break it up and put it in a pot. You know, you can't take the 400 piece of china set, but we can display it or we can create something out of it. Um, so there's so many different approaches, but those are some of the ones that we, we come across quite a bit. The biggest thing is communication, though. Just talking to them and finding out every order I've ever dealt with, there was trauma involved. Yeah. Um, but as an adult child taking that time to ask your parent, okay, A, in this home, what's most important to you? And actually listening to them. Um, if you don't have the luxury of an Elizabeth, if they are moving to a facility, a lot of times there, there is someone on staff, a designer on staff to, to come out and measure pieces of furniture to say, okay, this is gonna fit on that wall. Um, so just communication, talking, um, for us, we recommend to all of our downsizing clients, give yourself two weeks to get comfortable where you are because that piece that, yes, measurement-wise, it's going to fit on that wall, might not feel the same on that wall as it does at home. So sometimes they can actually take a little bit more than they were planning and sometimes <coughs> stuff comes back. So give yourself that time. And do it before you move out of, as you're moving out of the house before we ever put it on the market. Oh, yes. Preferably you move, oh, yeah. if you're moving to a community, <laughs> we prefer that you move to the community and give yourself two weeks to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then we clean the rest of the house out and then I put it on the market. Correct. And, and not, you're not gonna hear that from everybody, but that's our system. That's best practice. Those are the realtors that we work with. <laughs> because the ones that wanna come in and, and say, nope, we're gonna get your house on the market and then we're gonna figure the rest of it out, that's way too stressful yeah. for you, especially yeah. in this market. Because when those cash offers start coming mm -hmm. in that want a 15 day close and you haven't started the process yet, and then you call me and I'm six weeks out, yep. 
it just creates a problem. So we refer to that as shopping the house because exactly what you said, you're you know you're moving in, we're making some assumptions, but maybe there is a corner that was perfect for something that you didn't think was going to work, mm -hmm. or maybe you brought too much kitchen, you know, too many kitchen items, or mm -hmm. uh, too many wall hangings, or whatever, and then we can bring it back to the house. But then the house is sorted, and then you can just pick and choose, or maybe family members can come and pick and choose. That's and it's so much easier to move first, sell later. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, every, it's easier on everyone, it's more cost effective as well. Well, and then you're also, some people wanna pack up everything they're not taking with them and haul it away. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Only pack what you're taking with you, what's most important, and then let someone else worry about the rest of that stuff. Yep. But to pack up what you're not taking, just to then have to pack what you are taking, it's a huge well, especially process. if you in a process where they're like, all right, we need you to pack away all this stuff and clean it out so that it's very crisp and clear. And we want you to, to pack everything up, put it in a storage unit so we can take pictures and put it on the market. And then you've got all this stuff in a storage unit that now has to all be sorted. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's you not know, and, and you're sitting in your house <laughs> with nothing yeah. that you wanted and, and stuff. So, um, yeah. Our, and our find, process is to try and do it find a realtor that will work with you on that process, not a realtor that's going to come in and completely dictate that process. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because there's a lot of them because they want to get that house listed, they want to show a listing, they want to show a sell. You know, th that's their job. Um, but find a realtor that sees the whole job and is willing to work within your time. Preserving your physical and emotional yeah. health during the Correct. process. Somebody who understands. Mm -hmm. yep. um, we're going to do one back here and then I'll come back to you, okay? Go ahead. So, for the downsizing, um, everyone that's all about myself is a woman. Mm -hmm. So, hefty man around mm -hmm. helping with like new store will come in the house mm -hmm. to take the heavy stuff. I have to put it out on a garage. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys help with that kind of stuff? Cause yeah, so we, we are not movers, but we right. hire and coordinate movers. So in many situations, we will, well, actually today it's happening. <laughs> so we have uh, a client moving to a senior community. And uh, so because Restore will not go up and down stairs in, in this particular Restore, right? They're all, they all have kind of their own rules right now. And we have to keep up with all those rules because every, everyone has their own new week and they change every week, by the way, um, is, this particular uh, restore will not bring it down, but they will go in the house. So while the movers are there for the move for an extra $150, they're gonna go bring all the furniture down so that then following two weeks, right, after she's come back and shopped the house, when we actually have the pickup happen, it's all on the same floor. So we try to look at the economies of scale and just figure out what is the most efficient thing for that client. So that would be an example of something that we might do. Or we just call maybe a shuttle mover. We call them shuttle movers, which is not like the big moving houses, but it's kind of like two, two men that, that can do it, you know, two men in a truck, um, and just come in and do some shifting because they don't work on, there's different types of movers. They don't necessarily work on minimums like the big movers where they're going to charge a minimum of four hours or something like that. So. I know um, Miracle Movers will come in and do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with them a lot. Actually, they've moved myself, my kids, and everything else, but they will come in and move furniture in your house for you. Oh, well, I arrange it, so it's not. Uh, okay. So they just need to get it out somewhere. And you just need to go outside. Well, I can't leave it outside because I don't know where the person is getting by. No, you're like, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 a timing, it's a timing yeah. issue because it's, of the weather. It's, it's, and I can't give stuff away. Yeah. Nobody wants, like, I'm trying to give it yeah. away and nobody will take and it. And I will tell you, helping hands, helping hands, it's a mission, helping hands mission. Um, is a, a local charity and they will come in and they will pick up and they do nights and evenings, mm -hmm. daytime, um, and they turn very little away. You're going to find all of the charities right now are just completely inundated with stuff yeah. and it changes weekly because what they need changes weekly. Yeah. Um, Helping Hands has been a sparse charity. Does Green Charity Where are you located? Uh, so call oh, Chat. I know it seems far away, but they will come to Cary because they do it for us all the time. Chatham PTA. Chatham what? Chatham PTA, mm -hmm. and they actually will will come out and just tell them that the downsizers because they're actually trying to funnel it through specific groups to just tell them the downsizers ask you to, to call, um, and the um, 
they will come in and, and do it. And they do, they'll take everything. Um, yeah, I know there are groups like you know, people who've had fires, you know, I've got a whole children's bedroom set of mm -hmm. suicide or better, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. because it's okay to sell it. Are there, is there one resource to go to for that? Like in the refugees that come and they're trying to get? I don't have a refugee She needs to call Kim. So, so <laughs> there's a couple different ways you can go about The Helping Hands Mission, they actually, um, right. they have a thrift store that they sell stuff out to support, but they're supporting people going from homelessness to now getting housing, be it through Habitat or whoever. Um, but then if you contact a resource like us, like I have, I call her just my clean out girl, and she does all kinds of things. I mean, she'll clean out an attic, she'll haul stuff off, she'll she'll do whatever needs to be done. Um, previous years for several times. She's, a, she is, she's a godsend, let yes. me tell you, her name's Kim. And yeah. she, will she has come in and sold pieces. And what was really amazing is this last house I had on, on the market, she came in and met with a client, cleaned out a bunch of rooms that needed to be cleaned out, and then put several items up for sale to be picked up after the house went under contract. So it was all sold. She already knew what was sold. She's got an apartment, so she knows what it needs. But it's all taken care of, and the people will pick it up now that if the house is under contract. So we got it photographed with the dining room table because she couldn't move it. And it sat there, and it, it showed with the dining room table, and then the dining room table was picked up after it went under contract. Mm -hmm. So she it, and she did a whole clean out for me on a house that wasn't a big one. But when I work with my clients, a lot of times, like if they're moving out of state or they're moving into community, Basically, what I say is you get work with somebody, let's get you into the community, get everything that you want, and then you walk out and you hand me the keys. And then I take care of making sure, organizing who we're gonna hire to come in, and we've already figured it out. But, you know, Amanda or, or you know somebody has come in and said, okay, this is how we're gonna handle it, and then we get it all taken care of, get the house on the market, get it sold, and you just have to sign the paperwork. Um, so we're trying to take some of that, that stress of how do we get rid of stuff, just get you moved first, and then let, let us worry about how to get rid of everything else after that, and make you the most money, and get the house cleaned out, and put it on the market, put the house on the market empty. In this market, <laughs> there are not enough houses, so it's six day inventory. I would say it's a three day inventory, it's one weekend. House goes on in the market on Wednesday, starts showing on Friday, it's under contract by Sunday. Well, then there's there's just not enough people. There's there's more people moving than the amount of people to support them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and this goes for everyone in the move industry. So yeah. if you are anticipating a move, call yeah. early for, for for all the resources. It's, it's a staffing issue, and it's just an you know an economy issue. Um, but in general, we see movers and our teams booking eight to ten weeks out at this point. Yeah. And I would say for some of us. I turn away as much business as I take. Mm -hmm. um, so there's way more of a need than any of us could do. Does it slow it down any <laughs> No. No. <laughs> not, 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 not this <laughs> Our, well, I can tell you, anytime the housing market's busy, we're busy, but even without that, because we're also dealing with debt, right. it, yeah, I've been this busy for six years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's only getting busier, I think. Yeah. Question. Yes, we've talked about the process in the middle with your folks. How do you identify where to downsize to, and then comes time to sell your house, how do you uh, understand the process of pricing that house? So, and this not, might not be appropriate for this program. <laughs> well, and, and what I'm going to tell you is we get together for a consultation. I do free consultation. If you check the box on the, on the blue sheet, We'll call you and we'll set it up and we sit and we do a plan. So we look at where you are, where you want to be, and what's our timeline. Okay, so you'll handle the beginning and the end. I handle and I bring these ladies in, so I, I oversee like the whole process. And I will introduce Robin, who has just joined my team. Um, she's mm -hmm. also getting her certification working with seniors. She's amazing. And between the, the two of us, Yes, we oversee and bring in everybody. That we connect you to everybody that we see. So if we're working with these ladies, I bring them in. I'm there for the meeting. We meet, we discuss, we get our timeline in. Then you deal with them, and I'm overseeing that. Um, move day and pack day, a lot of times I show up with lunch. We get you taken care of 
And, and that goes back to identifying the property that you're looking for or the community. We can work with you with that. If it's beyond my scope of where you need to be, then I bring in a, a, a person who's a, a locator that I have. I have people that I work with that that are vetted. So we have people that work all the way through the whole process. So you're a single point of contact. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's what you need in a realtor. There's not a lot of those out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm the least worried about selling your house. That, that part <laughs> that's, the easiest that's the easiest part of selling your house and that's how I get paid but all the rest of it the only thing I require is you have to sign a contract with me to start out with and then I oversee it and you sell the house and I it could be a year it could be two years you know, but yeah I'm there I work, work with everybody and I that's what I get up every day for is to do this can I come up to the front? Absolutely. And say so, so Robin, Robin is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Hi. So I just wanted to sort of bring in something that happened this week. We had a client who we just sold their home um, a couple two years ago, and they're renting a one-story apartment, and their rent has increased tremendously this year. There's, you know, there's more people than there's places, and so now the wife and the two daughters, two daughters live in D.C. with their family, and they really want them to move into independent living because it's just, they can't drive back and forth and being closer. Um, and so I went there and I was like, well, do you wanna buy again? He's like, no, I'm 82, I don't wanna buy a house. And I'm like, well, how can I help you? What do we, how can I facilitate, you know, making your anxiety level low? And he was in a no place, right? It's too expensive, we can't do it, it's too hard. And I'm like, well, have you gone and seen any of these facilities? Have you got any pricing? Well, no, I haven't. Okay. So maybe what we need to do is we need to go visit the daughters and we need to see some communities and different price points and different atmospheres of where you want to be. And then you talk to your financial person and find out what's my budget. And then we make a plan, right? Because you say you're 82, your health isn't great. What's the point of saving that money, right? So that you can stay here and be worried about the cost of living and not see your grandkids. Or are we going to spend that money and have the rest of your life with your family and your community. Like, where is the value to you? Because we can't take it with us. We're not Egyptian. We're not putting it in the tomb and taking it to the next life, right? So let's spend it being in a place where your life is going to have the most joy and the most value. And he kind of like did a head tilt. <laughs> and he's like, well, I, we're going to think about it. And I'm like, I'm going to check up on you, Seth. I'm going to make sure that you're making a plan to at least explore what that will be for you right and then also that you're not the only person in this marriage Betsy is going to be here after you are gone and what can you do as a couple to make sure that she's in a place where she's not having to deal with the stress of being in this town alone after you pass on and I got another head tilt <laughs> but so it's not just about selling your house there's no money for us to be made in this meeting and following up but we care about you guys and we also you know I have 75 year old mom and the 87 year old dad so i am surrounded by seniors as well and dealing with the aging in place and so i have an actual connection not just with the business that we do but also in my life you know it's like what these women were talking about what's the hardest thing the emotional part yeah. doing the stuff we can all do stuff but when you really connect with people and you emotionally care about them and what they're going through that is what makes this special. Anybody can sell a house uh, here. I mean, you could do it with like one arm tied behind your back and an eye patch on. So that was just yeah. That was just a that was an interesting meeting to have today. It was like, all right, what can we do to help you and your wife right now? And we did help him move and sell their house because he was on a steep incline. And actually, the way we started with Seth, <laughs> so Elizabeth worked with him. He had paper, so much paper. <laughs> and so when when you work with me for the real estate you get a um, you get a $500 bonus I pay for and uh, we get eight hours mm -hmm. get eight hours uh, with one or four hours with two but I did that that's how I got Seth moving is I hired Elizabeth and I said Seth needs help with his paper now she once we got that Seth was ready to move into the apartment and now 
probably need to bring you back because I understand the house is as crowded or more than it was when you started. There was a lot of paper. In the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> he found more paper. Yeah, more paper. So it actually, Elizabeth did two paper moves, two paper situations. And when I work, see that's a problem and that's a sticking point, when I start, then I bring in the experts to help get them over that so that we can get them moving forward. And so, yeah, I put out $500 at the beginning with a signed piece of paper that could be canceled at any time, but it's worth the investment for me to get this person moving where they need to be. And I needed him moved because he was on second floor, he was unsteady, and he had a steep driveway. And my goal was to get him out of that house to some place where I knew he wasn't gonna fall. And that was the most important thing to me. I didn't care where he went or what happened. I needed him out of that house. And it, it was the paper. I mean, that, that was all. And sometimes it's just identifying what's causing that. You, yeah. Most people don't even know themselves, right? But that whole, kind of what that, that block is. And so the fact that Frida identified that brought us in one of those team members, um, one of our team members, she's a CPA. And so she knows paper really well and she knows file systems. And so she, I mean, he had in his master closet, he had eight of the tall file bins completely packed and she was able to condense it to one. Now, I don't know what's happened since then, but, but I don't know if her think it's quite that bad, but yeah. <laughs> we definitely so. filled the space we occupied. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I've learned Everyone that. Does. I learned that when I moved to my house, I didn't have anything, and now it's like, I gotta yep. downsize again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get rid of yeah. Well, and you did two clients in one year. We had another Mr. Bailey, mm -hmm. who wife has Parkinson's, and they needed to be on one floor. They were in a split level. Again, I got in there and I was like, ah, oh, paper. Oh my gosh, that whole downstairs bedroom, right? Paper and paper and paper. And when they brought it up, it, it was their entire living room, which was about half the size of this room, was all paper stacked and stacked and stacked. And but in that situation, we didn't, it wasn't a block necessarily for them, even though it was a project. It wasn't a block. It was all about moving her as quickly as possible to get her safe and alleviate the stress on him well, and he they was had a bought, caregiver. They had bought so. the house, they had already bought the house they were moving to, and it was like three months in, mm -hmm. and they still hadn't moved. Right. Because, and then he, he filled his garage and the third bedroom, mm -hmm. so we probably need to deal with it. So is there emotional trauma attached with something like that? When you say emotional trauma, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's nothing like horrific. As much as this whole thing happens somewhere, when you see those levels of something yeah, like that. Sometimes it is horrific. Um, we see lots of examples of horrific, unfortunately. Um, in this situation, um, he was, um, this particular client was on the spectrum, and so not being able to, to be able to have this executive functioning of what goes where, just, you know, males coming in and how to, so that he, so if you think about an, like an obsession, it, it's like this, just that's all he can focus on is the paper day in and day out. So a move is kind of over here, right? Or how to process a move because it's just focusing on the paper. So just to be able to identify that, isolate it and go, let's just work with this. And then all of a sudden, once it had been worked with, he could, he could move. Yep. It was, yeah. it, that's all that it took. But just sometimes it's just kind of obsessive uh, behaviors. And sometimes it's, it's autistic or, um, you know, uh, certain spectrum disorders. And, and then sometimes it's just a focus, you know, hyper focus on one specific area. I would area. also say one of the traumas that we see frequently is if they've lost a child. Mm -hmm. Most of the again. orders that that we've had, if they've lost a child, that is a huge traumatic event for them, whether it was 20 years ago or three. Um, and they do that because he could control the paper. He couldn't control everything else happening, but he could control that and that became his element of control. 100% of our hoarding clients have lost a child. Yep. And, and that has been the, the strain that, I, and I, I can't say that's true for everyone. That's right, just our but experience. for our experience, that is the huge, huge so trauma. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we've got a tie up. Um, blue pa sheet of paper, if you wanna leave it behind, it's your choice. Um, with any information, we'll follow up with you, um, especially if you'd like to receive the newsletter, either in email or in print. And if there's anything else we can do to help you move along the way, um, we'll be back, what is this month? February, so we'll be back the March 4th, and that will be um, about selling your home in today's market. That'll be our next one.